so the nervous system works because inflammation is going to flow from neuron to neuron. Neurons are functionally connected by synapses. These are junctions that mediate information transfer. It goes from one neuron to another or from one neuron to an effector cell. The presynaptic neuron is a neuron that is conducting an impulse towards a second neuron, towards the synapse itself. The postsynaptic neuron is the neuron that is taking a signal away from the synapse, so it is receiving information at the synapse. That postsynaptic neuron uh, in the periphery could be a neuron, a muscle cell, or a gland cell. But something to keep in mind is that most neurons are going to be both presynaptic and postsynaptic neurons. In some, some synapses, they'll be the pre, and in others, they'll be the post. <clears throat> so here we have synapses that go directly to the cell body of a second neuron. Here we have synapses between the dendrites of a neuron and an axon of another neuron. And here we actually have an axon to axon connection between neurons. They're the three major types of synapses. Here we see a microscopic image of them. So again, we can have connections between an axon and a dendrite, uh, an axon in the cell body, that would be the axial, axosomatic. Uh, and some less common ones would include axo, axonal, dendro, dendritic, somatic, dendritic. Uh, the two major types of synapses are chemical synapses and electrical synapses. Uh, we've mostly been talking about chemical, uh, yeah, chemical synapses. This is the most common type of synapse. It's specialized for the re release and reception of neurotransmitters. These are commonly composed of two parts, the axon terminal or the presynaptic neuron. It has synaptic vesicles filled with neurotransmitter. And on the postsynaptic neuron, there is a receptor region uh, that has uh, uh, receptors for that particular neurotransmitter. Uh, very much, and they're separated by the synaptic cleft. But this is very much what we saw in the muscular system, the skeletal muscle system. But now we're talking about between two nerves. So the electrical impulse at the end of the presynaptic neuron is going to be the release of chemicals. Then the release of chemicals on the postsynaptic neuron are going to lead to an electrical signal in the postsynaptic neuron. So transmission across the synaptic cleft, again, it doesn't go directly. It's a chemical event, uh, diffusion, release rate, a receptor binding, all part of it. This gives us unidirectional communication between neurons. There is a narrow gap, the synaptic cleft, between the synaptic terminal of ascending neuron and the surface of a receiving cell. An action potential arrives at the end of the axon of the sending cell. This causes chemical changes that make vesicles containing a chemical called a neurotransmitter fuse with the plasma membrane. The neurotransmitter molecules spill out into the synaptic cleft, diffuse across, and bind to the receptors on the receiving cell's membrane. The binding of neurotransmitters to receptors causes the attached ion channels to open. Depending on the type of neurotransmitter, receptors, and channels involved, this may excite or inhibit the receiving cell. Here we show excitation. Sodium ions rush in, changing the polarity of the membrane, and an action potential is triggered in the receiving cell. The neurotransmitter is broken down by an enzyme, and the ion channels close. Enzymatic breakdown is one of the several mechanisms by which transmission is terminated at chemical synapses. So information transfer across the chemical synapsis involves six steps. The action potential gets to the axon terminal. That opens voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium gets into the axon terminal. Uh, 
That entry of calcium causes the synaptic vesicles to fuse with the membrane to release their neurotransmitter. This involves snare proteins. And then the neurotransmitter diffuses across the synaptic cleft, binding to the receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. Binding of the neurotransmitter is going to open ion channels and create graded potentials. Uh, those, uh, depending on the neurotransmitter and depending on the receptor, can either make that second neuron more likely to fire, so it could be an excitatory signal, or it could make it less likely to fire, an inhibitory signal. Then neurotransmitter effects have to be terminated. So as long as that neurotransmitter is binding, the graded potentials continue. So within a few seconds, we either take some of, well, we do all three, take some of the neurotransmitter back up into the axon terminal or pick it up in astrocytes. Uh, we can also enzymatically degrade the neurotransmitter. And some of it will just diffuse away down, uh, from the synapse. There is a time, so this synaptic transfer is a rate limiting step, uh, again, just like it was in the muscle cell. Uh, it uh, takes anywhere between 0.3 and 5 milliseconds. So the other type is electrical synapses. They are much less common than chemical synapses. Here the neurons are electrically joined by gap junctions that connect cytoplasm of two adjacent neurons. This allows for very rapid communication. Uh, it can be unidirectional or bidirectional. We find it in some brain region responsible for eye movement and the hippocampus that's involved in emotion and memories. Uh, they are much more abundant in embryonic nerve tissue. So let's look at those neurotransmitters. Those neurotransmitters can be either uh, excitatory or inhibitory. Excitatory ones uh, allow for the simultaneous flow of sodium and potassium in opposite directions. They open chemically gated channels. Sodium influx is greater than sodium efflux. That gives a net graded potential depolarization, which we would call an excitatory postsynaptic potential. Uh, and it would trigger an action potential if we reach the threshold strength. Inhibitory synapses, uh, the neurotransmitters are going to open chemically gated channels that allow the entrance or exit of ions leading to hyperpolarization. And hyperpolarization makes the postsynaptic membrane more, uh, uh, less likely, makes it more negative inside, less likely that it's going to fire. It does so by opening potassium channels uh, and moves potassium out of the cell, but not more sodium in. And so this is where we begin to get a feeling for how this integration occurs. We can summate the uh, excitatory and inhibitory uh, signals that are coming in. Uh, we can do that either temporally or spatially, uh, distance or time. Uh, and by doing that, we can uh, try to predict if a neuron in a postsynaptic neuron is going to send a signal down its line, axon. So temporal summation, one or more presynaptic neurons transmit impulses in rapid fire order. In spatial summation, we get a large number of terminals simultaneously firing. Uh, they can be action, excitatory or inhibitory. And so the repeated use of synapses also makes the presynaptic cell excite the postsynaptic neuron. Calcium concentrations increase presynaptic terminal, cause release of more neurotransmitter, uh, more, leads to more excitatory. So in here we have what we would refer to as long-term potentiation, which is involved in learning and memory. The more you use these neurons, the more you use the neural pathways, the quicker and faster they respond. We can also have inhibition uh, and then 
less neurotransmitter being released, getting smaller, excitatory. And I'm going to go through these slides, but yeah, you want to work through those in your text. So the neurotransmitters are the language we use in the neuro nervous system. There are 50 at least neurotransmitters we've identified. Uh, most neurons are going to make two or more neurotransmitters. They can affect, exert several different influences, usually released at different stimulation frequencies. Neurotransmitters are classified by their chemical structure and by their function. Acetylcholine is the first identified, best understood of the neurotransmitters. It's the one we saw at the neuromuscular junction. It is also used in the autonomic nervous system and some central nervous system neurons. It's synthesized from acetic acid and choline by the enzyme choline acetyltransferase. Choline acetyltransferase. And it's degraded by the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. There are biogenic amines, such as catecholamines, an important one of those is dopamine, uh, norepinephrine, epinephrine, they are made from the amino acid tyrosine. The indolamines, like serotonin and histamine, uh, serotonin is made from tryptophan, histidine from, uh, histamine from the amino acid histidine. These are all widely used in the brain. We know they have roles in emotional behavior, the biological clock. Some are used in the autonomic nervous system, particularly norepinephrine. Uh, and these are the ones that are often associated with imbalances related to mental illnesses. Some amino acids are neurotransmitters. Uh, we don't, so it makes it a little difficult to show what role they have, but some that we know are glutamate, aspartate, glycine, and one called GABA, or gamma aminobutyric acid. Uh, neuropeptides are strings of amino acids that have diverse functions. Substance P is involved in mediating pain signals. Endorphins uh, involved in pain perception or reduce pain perception. And there are numerous gut gut brain peptides such as somatostatin and cholecytokinin that play a role in regulating digestion. Nucleotides, the purines, uh, have an effect on central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. ATP, the energy molecule, is also considered a neurotransmitter. Adenosine is a potent inhibitor in the brain. Caffeine blocks adenosine receptors. Uh, can induce calcium influx in astrocytes. Some gases and lipids, uh, nitric oxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide gases, they bind with G protein coupled receptors in the brain. Uh, they are lipid soluble, synthesized on demand. Uh, nitric oxide we believe is involved in learning and the formation of new memories. Uh, might lead to brain damage in stroke patients, and it's evolved in smooth muscle relaxation in the intestines. Hydrogen sulfide direct, acts directly on ion channels. That alters their function. Endocannabinoids uh, act on the same receptors as THC, the active ingredient in marijuana. They mostly use G protein linked receptors. They are lipid soluble, synthesized on demand, believed to be involved in learning and memory, and may be involved in neuro development, controlling appetite, and suppression, nausea. So we can also group them into uh, their effect, uh, their functions based on their effects or their actions. Uh, for effects, we have excitatory versus inhibitory, so they can depolarize or hyperpolarize cells. Uh, it's going to be determined a lot by the receptor the neurotransmitter binds to. GABA and glycine are usually inhibitory. Glutamate is usually excitatory. Acetylcholine and norepinephrine uh, have two different receptor types that have opposite effects. Acetylcholine is excitatory at the neuromuscular junction, but it's inhibitory in cardiac muscle. So direct versus indirect actions. Direct action a neurotransmitter binds to and opens an ion channel. Indirect action, the neurotransmitter works through second messenger system uh, and the difference between direct and 
second messengers is second messengers give you a broader, longer lasting effect, an amplifying effect, uh, whereas a direct action promotes rapid responses. Neuromodulators are chemical messengers released by neurons that don't directly cause excitatory or inhibitory, but instead affect the strength of synaptic transmission. They may influence the synthesis, the release, the degradation, or the reuptake of neurotransmitters. They can alter sensitivity to the postsynaptic membrane of the neurotransmitter. Uh, their effects may be paracrine, which means that it works just locally, similar to a hormone, but only locally. Channel-linked receptors, there are ligand-gated ion channels. The action is immediate and brief. The excitatory receptors are channels for small cations, sodium uh, influx. Inhibitory allows uh, chlorine influx. G-protein-linked receptors are indirect, more complex, a little slower, but the trade-off is prolongation. You get a wider range of effects. This is going to involve transmembrane protein complexes, widespread metabolic changes. So the muscanaric acetylcholine receptors, receptors that bind to biogenic amines, receptors that bind to neuropeptides would be this type of receptor. Their mechanism, the neurotransmitter binds to a G protein linked receptor, activating a G protein. The G protein is going to control the production of the second messengers, which might include cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP, diacylglycerol, or calcium itself. And the second messengers will then do things like open and close ion channels, activate kinase enzymes, phosphorylate channel proteins, or turn on genes, turn off genes. Integration is how we fit this all together. Neurons function together in groups. Uh, we don't know all the details, but there are some things we know. There are some specific circuits that we talked about last week. Uh, there are billions of neurons. And they have integration, so fuses. Uh, each part makes it all work smoothly as a whole. We have neuronal pools. They're integrating incoming information received from receptors of other neuronal pools and forward processed information to other destinations. So in a single neuronal pool, we have a single presynaptic fiber branching with synapses and several neurons in the pool. We could have a discharge zone neurons and facilitated zone neurons. In serial processing, input travels along one pathway to a specific generation uh, destination. Reflexes act like uh, act using serial processing. We get a rapid automatic response to stimuli. Particular stimuli causes the same response. Occurs over reflex arcs. Those reflex arcs include the receptor, the sensory neuron, the integration, the motor neuron, and the effector. I believe we talked about those types of reflexes in the muscular system. Parallel processing along give us processing along several different pathways. The different parts of the circuitry simultaneously deal with the information. One stimulus promotes numerous responses. This is going to be very important for higher level mental functioning. It's one of the ways in which a scent smell, an odor, can remind us of an associated experience. Odors are very strong triggers of memory. And then we have individual circuits we could talk about. We did talk about the five, uh, sorry, the four I'll cover today are diverging, converging, reverberating, and parallel after discharge. So in a diverging circuit, we get one input, which is going to affect numerous neurons and there it's output. In a converging circuit, several different uh, neurons will converge on a single uh, circuit or uh, output. In a reverberating circuit, the information is uh, oscillated back to some of the original ones. Uh, I think these are involved in breathing, sleep, wake cycles, and repetitive motor activities. 
In a parallel after discharge, the stimul signal stimulates neurons arranged in parallel arrays. Uh, this is probably involved in exacting mental processes such as mathematical calculations. Developmentally, we begin with a neural tube formed in the ectoderm. The neural tube becomes a central nervous system. There's a growth cone as neurons, uh, axons, crawl towards where they are going. Once it finds its target, it must find a place to form the synapse. About two-thirds of our neurons die before birth. Uh, if they don't find a place for a synapse, they undergo apoptosis. Uh, but this is an important part of development. During adolescence, childhood, learning is going to reinforce certain synapses. It's going to get rid of other synapses. And in fact, recent evidence suggests genes that promote excessive synaptic pruning may predispose an individual to schizophrenia. Neurons are amitotic after birth. Uh, there are some special neuron populations that continue to divide. Those would be found in our olfactory, our nose, and in the hippocampus. Here's a neural growth cone, a neuron looking for connection. All right, that should wrap up chapter 11. I will be posting chapter 12 shortly.